It's strange how when you learn something about yourself that should be a dramatic change, it doesn't necessarily feel like it at first. Facio scapulo humeral muscular dystrophy. It is a progressive disease that weakens and destroys skeletal muscles. It also often affects the trunk and legs. FSHD can also affect hearing, vision, and breathing, which can be life-shortening. It took me almost a couple of years to actually have it sink in. This is the day I learned I had fasciocapular humeral muscular dystrophy. In 1991, when the FSH Society was founded, we had no idea of what caused the disease. We had no idea of how many people were affected. FSHD is a genetically inheritable disease. I inherited FSHD from my mother, Carol. Since I had the disease and my mother had the disease, it became a focal point for me to try to make a difference for her and thousands of people with FSHD. FSHD was first described in 1884 by two French doctors, Louis Landuzzi and Joseph Desjardins. Nearly a century later, in 1980, a Dutch physician, George Padberg, published a thesis providing the first thorough modern description of FSHD. I was admitted to Harvard in 1980. During those years that I read Dr. George Padberg's thesis, and I really became further engaged in the problem of wanting to solve FSHD. The disease began to affect me well before I knew it existed. I no longer had the ability to run, and my right arm was dramatically weaker than my left. So I was not too surprised to learn that something was wrong with me. But it was hard to wrap my head around the fact that after years of doctor's visits and negative tests, we had finally found the answer. During the mid-1980s, as technologies to read the DNA code advanced rapidly, the idea of sequencing the entire human genome came to seem like an achievable goal. Daniel Perez joined the effort hoping to decipher the genetics of FSHD, but he became discouraged by the lack of funding and interest in his disease. Perez met another FSHD patient, Stephen Jacobson, who was a scientist at the University of California in San Diego. In 1991, they founded the FSH Society to raise funds for research. They found other patients one by one, and in 1997 convened the first patient meeting in San Diego. Eighty patients attended. They raised funds where they could, and in 1998 they awarded their first grants, $30,000 in all. Dan Perez and Steve Jacobson had a formidable challenge in addressing uh, the research needs in this disorder, and they had to get funding for research projects, and at the same time, attract researchers to devote parts of their careers uh, to this effort. Dan Perez was very instrumental in making the Congress enact the MD Care Act, which has made a major difference in the funding levels for muscular dystrophy research in general, as well as really push the needle on FSHD research. In 2016, the FSH Society funded a clinical trial research network that has grown to seven member institutions across the United States. I still don't know what made me think to pick up that slip of paper that so many people had overlooked and stepped on. I was glad it did. It was a ticket to the Boston Museum of Fine Arts and it was good for the whole day. So I didn't miss a second before I asked my mom if we could go. We set out for the museum. We climbed the steps and were faced with a row of towering pillars. After wandering through the museum for a while, I found myself alone in this room with one wall completely covered by a single oil painting. I remember standing there looking at it thinking nothing had ever made me feel so small as this painting did. 
As I stood there, drawn into the scene in front of me, I realized I had my own battle to fight and I was not going to lose. We're living in Vermont. There really wasn't like a muscular dystrophy clinic for, for children and we sort of felt alone and we didn't really know who to turn to. Um, but we talked to the muscular dystrophy clinic at Mass General Hospital and they referred us to the FSH Society and said that what a great resource they were. So the world for FSHD patients today is completely different. They can connect with each other, they have the FSH Society to go to, and there's a growing international community of researchers and doctors. The understanding that has come out of the basic research on FSHD has really enabled us to understand what the genetic alterations are that are leading to the, the muscular dystrophy. We look forward to a future where we can develop small molecule therapies to begin to correct those genetic alterations, to correct the protein expression, and hopefully restore muscle function in these patients. We still have a long way to go. We understand the genetic cause of FSHD, but not why muscles die. So if we move into clinical trials without really understanding these things, we risk failure. We owe it to the thousands of people who've supported the society to move quickly, but with rigor. Whenever I'm feeling trapped by my disease, I often think about how I was meant to find that ticket and how it led me to that painting which made me feel so small. Yet it also made me gather my strength. At that moment, I knew that I was not going to let this disease make me feel the same way that painting did. I was going to be greater than it. Once considered ultra-rare, FSH muscular dystrophy is now estimated to affect 1 in 8,000 people. That's nearly 1 million men, women, and children worldwide. The FSH Society has led the FSHD field from a place of darkness into light. We know which direction to go, what path to follow. Join us and support us on this journey. Together, we will make history.